Now, Roadshow cozies up to the East River in Manhattan for a visit with humorist Mo Rocca. As a kid, I consumed a lot of media. By the age of 10, I'd memorized the TV guide. Granted, this was pre-cable, there were only three channels to watch, but it was still kind of sick. Moe's love of television guided him to a life in the entertainment industry with jobs in radio, podcasts, and of course, TV. I began working in television as a writer, but I really wanted to be on camera. I had become very interested in the homes and grave sites of past presidents. When you think of presidents today, you think of two names, Grover and Cleveland. And that led me to The Daily Show with Jon Stewart because I was collecting great stories about marginalized history and sort of the caretakers, the docents, um, who I admire and are the reason that those sites are even there for us to visit. Well, these are razor straps that belong to Grover Cleveland. Mm, mm, mm. I don't see a price here. How much for these? That's our inventory numbers. They're, they're not for sale. Sharon, must all this go? No, it has to stay. And that kind of untapped this love of American history. This love of history has even spread into Moe's home. I didn't really have a strong aesthetic sensibility. And so presidential and political memorabilia um, certainly seemed like a great place to start, a way to create kind of a, a little bit of a show place, let's say. One of Moe's most grand showpieces is this bust, which in typical Mo Rocca fashion has a quirky story to it. Summer of 2000, I was out on the North Fork of New York's Long Island, visiting my friends Chris and Madeline. Chris took me into Greenport, and that's where I saw him. There was a tag, and it said Grover Cleveland, $150. And I thought, I just have to have him. And he became a part of my life, but then, Cut to 2014, and the New York Times came to do a piece about my apartment, a short little feature. And I introduced them to Grover Cleveland. They took a picture of me next to Grover Cleveland. Then I got a call from the writer of the article, and she said, um, hey, we're just doing a little fact-checking. Just want to make sure that's Grover Cleveland. And I sort of reacted defensively. And I said, well, of course it is. Who else would it be? So she said, uh, OK. And then she called back the next day, and she said, this has gone way up the chain, and there is concern at the highest levels that this is not Grover Cleveland. And she said, why don't we just call this a bust that Rocca says is Grover Cleveland? I thought, all right. And then the next year, in 2015, I went to the Marshfield, Missouri Cherry Blossom Festival, where I met George Cleveland, the grandson of Grover Cleveland. And I thought, this is my chance once and for all to prove to myself in the New York Times that this is Grover Cleveland. I showed him a picture of the bust on my phone. He looked at it. He turned to me and he said, that's not my grandfather. And I said, well, it is your, it is your grandfather. I mean, that's how, what it was sold to me as. He said, it's not my grandfather. And then I actually began looking at pictures of Grover Cleveland. And I realized this man is clearly not Grover Cleveland. He is Grover Cleveland. And I need to find out who he actually is. Mo hauled Grover across Manhattan in hopes Roadshow's Eric Silver could identify his bust. They met at Eric's workplace in New York, where Eric revealed just how difficult some questions are to answer, even for a longtime appraiser. I brought you Grover Cleveland, or a bust of someone who I thought was Grover Cleveland. So the piece has quite a bit of quality and has a presence, so it was done by a professional artist. It's not the work of an amateur. It's signed here, it says P.S., and then it's A.B.B., and then it drifts off and we can't really read it, but it's very clearly dated 1921. And we don't know where it was made. I mean, I don't know if it's American, it could be French, Italian, we just don't know. Oh, so you don't know who it is? I don't know. I wish I did. Oh. So is this where we have a lower third graphic that says, if you know who this is, write to <laughs> exactly. Eric at AntiquesRoadshow.com. Right. It costs a lot of money to have this done, but they didn't go the extra mile and have it cast in bronze. It is painted plaster. Oh, okay. So, you know. In terms of determining the value of this piece, it ha it's interesting, it has a presence, uh, it sort of 
kitschy and funky, uh, but still I think the value would probably be a couple of hundred dollars in a retail setting. We'll see what other presidential hopefuls Mo has to share in a bit. Across the Hudson, appraiser Devin Eastland takes a look at some more of Mo Rocca's presidential collection. My name is Devin Eastland. I am an appraiser for Antiques Roadshow, and my full-time job is at Swan Galleries, where I'm a senior specialist in early printed books. Today, we're heading over to Lillian Nassau to do an appraisal for Mo Rocca, who's got a great political collection. This is a campaign neckerchief from the campaign of Benjamin Harrison and his running mate, Levi Morton. Harrison would be elected in 1888. These neckerchiefs were really popular, especially during the 1880s. I found a, an advertisement for one of the producers of these bandanas, and they had a hundred different varieties just from the 1888 Harrison Morton, a dizzying array, and they were 47 cents a dozen up to $6 a dozen, depending on the fabric and how fancy. So it was a popular item at the time. People were into snuff. Oh, snuff. Yeah. Which, so this is for snuff heads. It's kind of practical in kind of a gross way. Because you, and then. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so you. And 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 the same time, you can you can show your political um, opinions as well and support your candidate. But I mean, blowing into this doesn't necessarily mean that you like the guy. <laughs> you would think. I found it on a historical memorabilia site about 15 years ago. I think I paid about $300 for it. Okay. Well, you didn't do too poorly, I would say. I see these selling at auction for this campaign and these two candidates um, for about $100. The relationship between auction and retail is usually about double an auction price for a retail oh, okay. price. So you're, you're in the zone. And I know what everyone is thinking. I know it looks like mucus, but it's not. <laughs> well, thanks for clearing that up. And we have something else. Very interesting thing. Yes. Now, this is a ticket to the Senate trial impeachment of President Andrew Johnson, our 17th president, um, who was impeached in 1868. He assumed office after Lincoln's assassination. I purchased this in the late 90s. I will tell you that it almost seemed too easy to acquire, I thought, how many tickets were, you know, they didn't have the impeachment trial at Radio City Music Hall. I mean, there weren't that many seats. So how many bona fide tickets could there be? So I will tell you that I purchased this for around four or $500 without the certainty that it's not a copy. Well, I can assure you it is an actual impeachment ticket. Yes! <laughs> They did give out a thousand tickets a day. A thousand for tickets? For every single day. So it started in March and went to May. And the way they differentiated and made sure that the tickets, the valid tickets, were to be presented on the proper day, not only is it dated, this is also printed in red ink on a yellow coated paper. And it's on a heavy stock. We can't take it out, but it's thick like a card. The printers had a government contract to print these tickets. And what they did was they printed a different color every day. So one of the ways that I can tell you for sure that it's right is that April 3rd, 1868 was yellow background, red ink, which is what yours has. So your example is a little faded, but I think that the $400 retail price is perfectly reasonable. Okay. And that helps make up for the bath I took on the bandana. <laughs> yes, indeed, indeed. And thank you so much for bringing your, your thing. Devin, thank you. It's, I mean, I prize these even more now that I know so much more about them. My day with Roadshow has been just so enlightening. I mean, let's face it, as a consumer, I'm clearly a chump. But beyond that, what really matters is what I've learned about the items and how much more prized they are. I mean, Devin brought beauty to impeachment by pointing out the artistry of the impeachment ticket. As for that neckerchief from 1888, I mean, clearly I'm not doing enough snuff. And as for Grover, and I'm calling him Grover, I don't love him any less. I hope it's worth over 10 million, that is. Oh, thank God I was waiting for you to end that sentence. Yeah, all right, take care. Bye-bye. Nice. It's hilarious. <laughs>